Today, I'm gonna to show you how to take your food photos from substandard to sublime. A little bit like this one, which was taken on a smartphone using a bit of really basic equipment and a whole lot of information, AKA light. We're looking for three fundamentals today. We're looking for color, we're looking for detail, and finally, we're looking for depth. And that is how you're gonna get the most accurate representation of that delicious meal you just slaved over. So, let me introduce you to my equipment. Coming in at number one, we've got our window here. That window is great. It's got the sun in the other direction, the light's coming through, nice and ambient, not too harsh. And that's gonna give us our main source of light for taking this food photo. And we're gonna be using this source to play around with. Okay, so we've got the tin foil here. Now, as you can see, we've got a dull side and we've got a really, really shiny side. So what we're gonna try and do is we don't want to use the shiny side because it's a bit too aggressive. It's a bit too much of a mirror finish. So we're going to use the dull side. So what you're going to do is you're just going to grab a chopping board, bring one edge over, fold it around, and voila, you've got yourself a nice reflector disc. Another thing we want to try and control is hand movement. So we're just going to eliminate them all together. Got a smartphone mount here. Uh, that's going to go on a tripod and I highly recommend buying a tripod. They're well worth the investment. So stability is important because what it allows the uh, camera to sense is that nothing's moving. Therefore, the shutter speed can come down, which means you're letting more light in. And more light means more information, which means hopefully a better photo. So what we've got here is a simple crumpet with a beetroot, goat's cheese and creme fraiche puree. Cornichon, a bit of radish and some dill. Absolutely delicious. Here's our setup. Um, as you can see, we've got the window over there and then we've got a dark spot here. And then you actually see that working here. So you've got the shadow on this side, you've got the light part on this side. What we're trying to do is we're trying to give this, give this a little bit more balance. So we want to illuminate this side, and that's where the reflector comes in. We'll put the reflector on, it'll take the light from the window, and it'll bounce it back onto this side. So all we need to do is set it up just here. So as you can see, with just a little slight bit of angle, we're bouncing all the light back onto the crumpet. Now as you can see on the phone, we're um, currently on the standard lens. The standard lens is, shoots fairly wide, but in the edit, we'll crop into that. So I've got the phone on a five second timer. What that does is that you can, you can take the photo, camera will be actually quite stable by the time it actually comes to take the photo. So we'll do one with that, and then my camera's also got a telephoto lens, which is a closer lens. So we'll take one with that too, and we can have a look at the details afterwards. So you can see the light, is illuminating the uh, crumpet quite well. Press the uh, shutter button and we'll give it a go. Cool, so that's one photo with it and I'll show one without it, a lot darker. So immediately, if we go into review mode, we can see the difference. So there's the one without a lot less information, especially around the uh, closer side of the crumpet to the, to the camera. And we swipe across, it's nicely illuminated. So what we're going to do now is we'll just get one with a telephoto lens. If your uh, phone has a telephoto lens, this is very, very helpful. So you zoom right in. We can tap to focus right there. And we'll make a couple of adjustments. We've got the... Uh, the reflector disc here, and let's take that photo. Excellent. So as you can see, there's still a shadow there, but the shadow is now light enough on the on the actual image that it's uh, we can use that information to make it darker or make it lighter, and it's giving us the right amount of depth and a bit of contrast. So now it's time to edit the shot that we've got here. All right, so we're going to go to the editor. I use uh, Snapseed when I'm editing on my phone, at least. So we're going to go in, 
we'll open up a photo, get that with latest one there. All right, so as you can see, the colors look a little bit flat. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, grab the uh, tools, and we're gonna tune the image. So now we can actually start to amplify the colors a little bit. So this is the uh, one that has been taken on the telephoto lens. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna boost the contrast slightly. Cool. Gonna boost the saturation. You can see the colors start to really work their way in there. The ambience, we're gonna just do just a little adjustments. You're just gonna make little adjustments until you think that it looks like the way it looks like in real life. So the highlights are gonna take down some of the glossy bits. So we're gonna bring those down. It's just gonna level out the image slightly. And then we're gonna take the shadows. And see if we lift the shadows up, you can see that it's working its way on the shadows here. You can especially see it on the, uh, the little ramic, green ramekin at the back. But we're gonna leave those fairly normal. Maybe bring them even down slightly. Just give it a little bit more depth on that crumpet. And then warmth is completely up to you. But personally, I, the camera usually gets it right on the first go ish especially with natural daylight it really really works sweet and so the brightness i think is fine i usually leave that but you can go nuts with that but i wouldn't do it we've, we've tapped to focus and we've tapped to expose already so we're going to give that a little tick so immediately if i tap and hold you can see the difference between the photo that i uh, took and the photo that i edited and that's starting to look like real life so the next option is details uh, the structure we can boost the crap out of that. Probably not worth it. It gets really, really sort of uh, uh, harsh looking. And not, conversely, you can also go all the way down and make it look really, really soft. Personally, I think the structure's fine. Maybe just a slight, slight push up on the structure. Give those corners on a little bit more texture. And then sharpening, we can you can boost it all the way up, but I personally don't. I leave it just, just, a, just a little touch. And then we click enter and then that's done so as you can see that's already already looking really nice really appetizing so as you can see that that, that having the light coming in from that angle really gives you just like a real realistic look it's nice and deep and it looks like if that was put in front of you it would be what it looks like it's fairly realistic so we can export that one give that a save now we'll work on the wider shot which was the more interesting one I think that was uh, this one here. So this is the one, with the uh, the wide angle lens, which I traditionally wouldn't use. But all we can do here is we can just throw the last edits on, and already we're halfway there. So what we can do now is we can take our tools, we can find our crop. Now Instagram is really uh, good under five by four or four by five aspect ratio. It takes up more of the screen and it's just it's just it looks it looks a lot better so you can we're not taking that much of the image really so we're just gonna crop out the bit that we need so even still we can make it look like that right and then we're gonna lose a bit of detail here but that's essentially the shot that you end up with so you use the last edits from the one before and boost it up so now if I take a look at that because the lens is different, we've got a slightly sort of different look to it. So what we'll do is we'll take the image tuner, we'll go to uh, shadows and we'll bring up those shadows just a touch. Let's go maybe 27-ish. And just a little bit, it's just a little bit brighter. And then finally we'll take the brightness up just a touch. Cool. Export that and save. So now if we compare the two images, we can go to my uh, gallery and we can look at our latest images. So we go in here and then there's the, so there's photo number one and there's the original version and there's photo number two and then there's the jazzed up version. Now you can actually see here, I haven't tapped to focus quite well enough on that. I make sure that you tap where on the screen where you want to focus it to get it right. Personally, that one's the more Instagrammable shot, um, but that's with a telephoto lens, but this one, perfectly serviceable. I could have even done a bit better by putting the jar in behind it, give it a bit more texture, a little bit more contrast. Um, and also, yeah, making sure that you tap to focus properly.
because as you can see, there's a slight focus issue in there. But other than that, the light makes a huge difference as to what it could look like versus what it should look like. So I think that's pretty much everything. Yeah, I'd call that an Instagramable shot and then you'll be able to see this on my Instagram. If you've come from my Instagram, that's the photo that would have brought you there. Otherwise, I hope you use this to sort of boost up the level of your shots. There are a lot more uh, other things that you need to keep in mind. If you're taking a photo at night time, most light bulbs in houses are tungsten and it's going to give you a really yellowy hue. Where possible, uh, I would try and change those light bulbs for daylight light bulbs, even though they don't look that nice. They give you a more accurate representation of what the food is meant to look like. Other than that, you're just going to have to work out your color balance. Uh, and that's pretty much how I'd leave things. <laughs>